Hey guys, it's Miss Fearing here. We're gonna go ahead and look at unit five, note seven. We are multiplying rational expressions now, okay? So yesterday we just went and simplified rational expressions. Now we're gonna end up multiplying them. Here's those steps. There's only one new one here, okay? So first of all, how do you know if you need to factor or not? Anytime you have that x squared happening, x to the two power, you should be using the x in the box. You need to factor, okay? But remember, always, 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 you look for a GCF first. Then, because the sign will say multiplication, basically, I'm going to give you two different fractions like this. And what we know is, say, if I had A over B times C over D, is that you multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So this would be AC over BD. So we basically are just going to smush it all together when we multiply you need to find those excluded values. Remember, set the bottom of the fraction equal to zero and solve for numbers that you cannot have in that denominator. And then simplify by crossing things off that are the same. So factors that are the same on top as they are on bottom, you cross them off. So we're gonna start pretty easy here. What you're gonna notice is these are already in parentheses and nothing is squared. So this has already been factored for you. You don't need to go through and do anything. We just have to start right away with those excluded values. So I'm gonna make this one full fraction. Remember, what's on top stays on top, on bottom, on bottom. So if I'm looking for excluded values, I'm looking for the things that the denominator cannot be. So I'm gonna do my bottom things, and I'm just gonna do some little side work here. X plus eight equals zero. Remember, solving for X, X cannot equal negative eight. X minus three equals zero. So solve for X x cannot be 3, and then x minus 8 can equal to 0. Solve for x, x cannot be positive 8. So in this situation, my excluded values are x cannot equal negative 8, 3, or positive 8. Then what we have to do is we have to cross things off. Whatever's on top, I can cross off with the things that are on the bottom, as long as what's inside the parentheses are the exact same thing. So I have an x minus 8 on top. I can cross it off with the x minus 8 on the bottom. I have an x minus 3 on top. I can cross it off with the x minus 3 on the bottom. So I am going to be left with an x plus 4 on the top and an x plus 8 on the bottom. So these two things are what I'm going to be looking for as my answers. Let's look at this next one. Again, it's already been factored for me. There's nothing here that has like an a squared or anything with a GCF. It's already in its parentheses, so I'm gonna multiply. So basically it just means that I'm gonna make this one giant fraction. What's on top stays on top. What's on bottom stays on bottom. And I gotta find my EVs, okay? My excluded values first. So I'm gonna look at the denominator. Well, I want any of the variables. I have to plug in what I'm looking for, the variables. So this nine doesn't have a variable with it, so it doesn't change anything. I'm just gonna look at this a minus five. I'm gonna set it equal to zero and solve for a. So I know that a cannot equal positive five. So a cannot equal five. Now I'm gonna simplify. Factors that are the same on top as they are on bottom, I can cross off. So I have an a minus five on the top with an a minus five on the bottom. Notice that I have two a plus fives, but they're both on the top, so I cannot cross them off. So I'm gonna leave both of them up on top. A plus five. All over, the only thing left on the bottom is the nine. So again, I'm looking for both of those things as my answer. All right, number three here. This is where it's gonna get fun, you guys. So we have to think of this as four separate problems that we're gonna then put back together to simplify and find our excluded values, okay? So looking at the top of this first fraction, I have n to the third minus 10n squared plus 24n. First things first, I know that I'm gonna have to find a GCF. Well, they all have an n in common, so I'm gonna take that out. So I'm gonna be left with n squared minus 10n plus 24. Since I have that n squared now, I know that I'm gonna have to factor this thing. So I have a 24 on top and a 10, negative 10 on the bottom. So I know that negative six and negative four, hopefully you're getting to the point where you can see the four terms that are going inside your box. So I have that n squared, the negative six n, the negative four n, and the 24. So I have n minus six and n negative four. So again, if you are not seeing that, 
then you want to go ahead and stop the video and come connect with me. But this is just factoring like we've been doing. So this is going to give me N that I pulled out, that GCF from up here that I take it, took out. And then I have N minus 6, N minus 4. Now we're going to look at the bottom. Okay, So I have N squared plus 8N plus 15. We're going to do our X first, 15 on top, 8 on the bottom. Two numbers that multiply to 15 and add to 8. I know 5 and 3. So I'm going to plug things into my box here. I'm going to have an n squared, a 5n, a 3n, and a 15. So I'm going to have n and 5, n and 3. So n plus 5, n plus 3. Now I'm going to look at the top of the second fraction. First things first, is there a GCF? In this situation, there is. I have a 2 that I can divide out of both, so I'm left with n plus 5. Now, there's nothing that's squared there, so that's it for that piece. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at the bottom of that second fraction. So I have a 3n to the 4th minus a 48n squared. Well, I know that both of those have a 3n in common. So I'm going to take, or sorry, 3n squared in common. So I'm going to take a 3n squared out. Remember, it's the smallest power that you take out. That's how I know that n squared has to come out. I'd be left with n to the 2 minus 16. So since this is still an n squared, we have to go through and we have to do our x. So I have a negative 16 on top, a 0 on the bottom. So I have negative 4 and positive 4. Set up your x. So I have an n squared, a negative 4n, a positive 4n, and a negative 16. So I have n and negative 4, n and positive 4. So this one's going to be the 3n squared that I took out front, n minus 4 times n plus 4. Okay, so all I did was factor all those things. What I have to do now is write them where they belong. So the top of the first fraction I had down here, I ended up having an n times n minus 6, n minus 4. Bottom of the first fraction, I ended up with n plus 5, n plus 3. So now I know that multiplying is just going to tell me to make this one giant fraction. So I'm just going to write what I had in the second part. Second fraction on the top was 2, n plus 5. And on the bottom, I had 3n squared, n minus 4, n plus 4. Okay, so now we still have to find our EVs here. And we still need to simplify. So EVs, looking at the denominator, hopefully you're getting to the point where you can figure this out. Well, for this one, n cannot be negative 5. For this one, n cannot be negative 3. This right here, 3 times what number would give me 0? Okay, there's no plus or minus. It's just 3 times what number would give me 0? Well, and that would be 0. For this, n cannot be 4. And for this one, n cannot be negative 4. So there's all my EVs, but now I still need to simplify. So I have a negative n minus 4 on the top and an n minus 4 on the bottom. n plus 5 with n plus 5. I have an n squared on the bottom and an n to the 1 on top. Remember, when you divide, you subtract those numbers. And you do the bigger one minus the smaller one, put it where the bigger one was. So I'm going to take this away and take this away. So what that's going to leave me, and I'm going to kind of write it over here in the yellow, on the top, I'm going to be n minus 6 with a 2. So I'm going to put the 2 out front. On the bottom, you're still going to have 3n, n plus 3, n plus 4. Okay, it's kind of a really long problem, but this is your final answer, as well as those EVs. So anything that you see in yellow is what you would your final answer is going to look like on your sheet of paper. Make sure that you box it, make it highlight it, whatever you need to do so that I know that that's what I'm looking for as your answer. All right, another problem just like that. So it's not new stuff. It's just a lot of the same stuff that we've been doing. So you just have to take your time and really process through it. So top of the first fraction, I have a B squared plus 12B plus 11. So since it's a b squared, I know I'm going to use my x. I have 11 on top, 12 on the bottom. So I know 11 and 1. So when I use my box, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have b squared, 11b, 
1b and 11. So I have b and 11, b and 1. So this would give me b plus 11, b plus 1. Bottom of the first fraction, I have b to the third minus 9b. Well, I know they both have a b in common right away, so I'm going to pull that out front. So I'm going to be left with b squared minus 9. So since it's still squared, I do need to factor it. Ne negative 9 on top, 0 on the bottom, so it gives me 3 and negative 3. Plug it into your box. I'm going to have b squared, 3b, negative 3b, and negative 9. So I'm going to have b and 3, b and negative 3. So what I took out, that GCF has to be out front first. And then I have a b plus 3, b minus 3. Okay, the top of the second fraction, it's just b plus 9. There's no GCF. There is no b squared, so I don't have to factor it. So this is basically just done. It's just b plus 9. So let's look at the bottom of the second one now. I have b squared plus 20b plus 99. I have no GCF here, so I'm going to go ahead and just do my x because I have a b squared, so I know I need to factor it. 99 on top, 20 on the bottom. So numbers that multiply to 99 and add to 20 are 9 and 11. So I'm going to go ahead and do my box here. I'll have b squared, 9b, 11b, and 99. So these have a b and a 9, and these have a b and an 11 in common. So I'd have b plus 9, b plus 11. So now I need to write that all. What's on top is going to go on top, bottom on bottom. Okay, so the first thing I have is b plus 11, b plus 1. Over on the bottom I had b, b plus 3, b minus 3. Top of the second I just had b plus 9. Bottom of the second I had b plus 9 b plus 11. So I'm going to move straight into those EVs first. So again, hopefully you're seeing this. A number that I would plug in here that when you multiply by anything else is going to give you zero would be zero. Um, sorry, I need to go back and take it here. You need to have b cannot equal zero. Here, b cannot equal negative three. For this one, b cannot equal positive 3, b cannot equal negative 9, and b cannot equal negative 11. So those are going to be all my EVs. And now I need to simplify. So I have a b plus 11 on top and a b plus 11 on bottom. b plus 9 with a b plus 9. Now, remember, this is a whole b plus 1. It's in parentheses, so I cannot take just the b's out of that. So on the top, I would be left with b plus 1 all over b times b plus 3, b minus 3. So the two things on our box are the two things I would be looking for as your answer. So I know that this is not the easiest thing. Again, it's nothing really new. It's just piecing together all of the different things that you have learned in one single problem. So if you have questions, make sure you connect with me. If you need scratch paper to do more work on, feel free to come up. Use a piece out of a notebook, whatever you need, but I have some extra that you can use if you need it. Good luck.